Well, that report was directed by Philip Carter. I've now moved upstairs to a simulated operating theatre where surgical teams rehearse very complex operations. And we'll have more on that later. But first, to discuss that report by Victoria MacDonald uh, is Sir Brian Jarman, who collected the data uh, for us. The Conservative MP Charlotte Leslie, who sits on the Health Select Committee, Fiona Bell, who you saw in the report, who set up Cure the NHS North East after her grandfather died in hospital as a result of poor care, and Jenny Fessett, a senior A&E nurse who was bullied for whistleblowing. And we did ask the Health Secretary and any health ministers to join us here, but no one was available. Charlotte Leslie first, they are absolutely shocking figures, aren't they? What's gone wrong? These are absolutely shocking figures. Now, a lot of politicians stand in the dispatch box and say the NHS is the envy of the world. I know a lot of doctors who say that too and they roll their eyes and say if only. Now, the concept of from grave, cradle to grave care um, based on um, need and not ability to pay, that is an envy of the world. But I think we've learnt that it doesn't pay and it certainly doesn't help patients if we say the NHS is something sacred that can't be criticised and we can't look at the un undercover data and what's really going on in our hospitals. I think that's what this report shows and it's very, very shocking. Is it cash or culture that's the problem? Because if you look at the figures, in America, health spending is 17.7% of GDP, here just 9.4%. Is that the problem or is it cultural? I mean, I think you have to be very careful when you compare countries that are very dissimilar, like America and the UK. We certainly wouldn't want to replicate the American system. But it's a bit of both, but it's certainly culture. And if you speak to older clinicians and older nurses, they do say there's been a culture change. And things like the European Working Time Directive that limit the training hours that doctors can do and encourage a clock-on, clock-off culture, those things are all eroding the kind of professionalism that has kept our NHS um, standing so high, but is obviously cracking at the moment. Fiona Bell, you know all too well what can go wrong and how the standards of care can fall short, but you're by no means alone, are you? No, unfortunately not. Um, shortly after my grandfather's inquest, I set up the campaign group Cure the NHS North East, and within two months we had two and a half thousand members, and that came as a huge shock because I was always informed that it would be a slow start. So to suddenly find myself it, with this influx of people wanting help, uh, it, it came as a massive shock. But it was basic care that was wanting in your grandfather's case, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It, it was a, a mixture of, of basic care and a, a lack of communication and actually implementing the recommendations that could have potentially prevented him from having further falls. Jenny Fetter, is this a cultural problem in that you, know, you as a whistleblower know how hard it is to blow the whistle compared to somewhere in America. Is that the case? Um, unfortunately, it is. Certainly in my experience and in, this, and, and in my role as lead nurse for Patients First, nurses are still coming to us um, who have blown the whistle, who are receiving appalling treatment by, by their employers within the NHS. The complaints, I mean, if you look at the figures that we just saw in that report, one in 375 complaints are formally investigated. People who complain just aren't taken seriously, is that the case? That's something that needs to be addressed and highlighted. Um, the patient's voice must be heard uh, within the NHS. Uh, the best part of learning is learning through the patient experience and through the relatives uh, that see their patients suffer um, uh, through, through poor, poor standards of care. If you look at the difference, Sir Brian Jarman, culture, um, in, the, in America, but also cash. Is mm -hmm. the bigger problem culture or, or lack of money? I think the culture is a major factor, but there is, a, you know, there is higher funding for American hospitals in terms of doing scans and all that sort of stuff. Um, it, the culture is that if any clinician tries to report a problem, particularly junior doctors, more or less they'll be fired after they've not been able to get it through the hospital. Um, patients, as you said, as Charlotte Leslie said, their, their complaints are more or less ignored. And the head of the NHS said that uh, he would have a Stalinist con control from the centre of the NHS. Now, that is utterly unacceptable. And I think we need to get patients, uh, clinicians involved in managing effectively the NHS, involvement in boards. So I think the, it is the culture, and changing the culture is virtually no cost at all. Fiona Bell, what would you like to see change that would help, or might have helped in your case? I would like to see accountability from the top, from um, the CEOs at board level. There is absolutely no accountability at all. Um, you have families that have been campaigning for years for justice. 
Um, do you have CEOs that, that will engage in the complaints process, but when it comes to actually helping you, they don't implement what the recommendations are in, in the report, which then leads to failure? Charlotte Leslie, you were nodding at that. I mean, what would you like to see the government doing? Well, I have to say, we, we've seen the man who's now the head of NHS England, Sir David Nicholson, has presided over, in many ways, the architect of a culture which says, hide the bad news, whatever the cost of the patient. I've said before, and I'll say it again, if accountability is to mean anything, I don't see how a person and a group of people who've presided over that kind of culture can be promoted. I simply don't. So, Brian, you compiled these figures over a period mm. of years. What made you sit on them for so long? Because I've been trying to check that they were correct and they, they were so dramatically, it showed us to be so dramatically high and I've always been very supportive of the NHS. I just would just found it very difficult to accept. I mean, we had enough problems when we tried to draw attention to the mortality alerts and with those mentions to David Nicholson, he actually said there was no data available uh, and his own SHA, which was in charge of the mid-staffs, had actually logged on to the data 69,000 times the mortality data and how can the head of the NHS say that there's no data available? He eventually had to uh, apologise to that for the Health Select Committee. So all of those factors I think are important. So Brian Jarman, Charlotte Leslie, Fiona Bell, Jenny Fassett, thank you very much for joining me and you can read more from Victoria MacDonald on our website which is channel4.com slash news and if you want to read more about Professor Jarman's data he'll be tweeting it during the programme. We'll be back later when we'll be looking in more detail on what goes on in this theatre and at life in the accident and emergency department. Over now to Matt in the studio for more of the day's news. Thanks, Cathy.